Brett invited me. So thanks again. Um, what I'd like to do is touch a little bit on what the chamber is, and then we'll go in and let you know what we're proposing and what we're thinking. A chamber of commerce is a form of business network or organization that provides a platform for the businesses and community to get to know each other and to grow through these connections. Or to further the interest of the members' business. A chamber can only be as strong as its members. The chamber job is to bring the members together in one place. We do this through networking. Um, back with the chamber has been together since 2012. And I remember the first meeting we had it at Uptown Cafe and a place was packed. I think it was something new and everybody wanted to find out about it. But one thing I noticed in the meeting, they were talking to each other. The businesses were saying, you know, this worked for me and this didn't work for me. We advertised, we sent out coupons. But it was, I realized at that moment, that was networking. That's what businesses need to come together in a chamber to do so they can talk and see what makes their business better. So with that being said, um, I, we, we thought about something about the businesses in the town here that uh, are sort of neglected. They try to start a business, and a lot of times people just don't know about them. But what can we do to make the town more inviting, more warm for people from outsiders that come through? And what I've done is taken some pictures, and I'm going to share that with you. But for a customer or a business to be able to, to survive, they need a good presentation. Well, like I said, a media needs to be warm and inviting. And one thing we noticed was our signs, our welcome signs. Now, we have two beautiful signs uh, when you come into the county. Welcome to Amelia County. But if you look at the signs we have when you come into the courthouse area or town, and I want to pass these around. I'm going to start one on one side of the room and one on the other. Can I, I just want you to see what I'm talking about here. Um, this is a very small sign, very small, and it says Amelia. And on that sign at the top, it will say 605 to turn. Now, if I was coming into a million, I would think that sign right there would tell me I got to take a left down Wayside Avenue to be able to find a million. Confusing. It bothers me that the media sign can not even get its own sign. It ends up being on with another sign with direction. The other sign there would direct you down to Jefferson Street. Um, with that being said, that's confusing too. That's like, but however, when you get to the sign, I like this. It's saying to me, and it's saying a speed limit sign of 35. It looks like you entered a uh, small municipal or town. So that one does work. I think these other ones, I don't like the arrows at the top. So, what we had proposed, probably, um, I'd like to share with you all that I went into uh, to Chester, and they have a sign like, it looks really nice, mm -hmm. and it's a composite sign. I did get a price of this. You have a composite sign. I got one price I'd like to get more for about $800. I think we could do the post. I can pass that around if you want to look at it a little bit closer. Um, but that'd be nice. It'd be warm, inviting, welcoming. And if I had a business here and somebody was coming in, come to a designated area, they tell their friends about it. Um, it's something I'd like to look for us in the future and possibly do this. Um, and then we have one other sign. Now, about 10 or 12 years ago, most of y'all know I'm on the care board and I took on this project because this sign was in horrible shape. Um, it's a welcome sign. It's out on 362. It's the civic sign. The civic sign, you see it. So I have that one around. This is something that's on a piece of property that's for sale. We knew when we cleaned it up, the shrubs were in it. And let me point this out too. Lowe's was really good. We went to Lowe's and they gave us $250 to spruce this sign up. So and trimming the shrubs, cutting it back, trying to make it look nice. Um, but this may be something we'll put on with the welcome sign. And one of them. If we don't know what's going to happen to that sign there, it could go away. You know, once they cut the bank down, they may not want that to be on their property. Uh, I think it was put there from Mr. Rudy Gallagher. 
I believe, from GBC. Uh, until they that property, did you even notice it was there? And we were able to go in there with the money that Lowe's gave us and spruced it up, made it look much better. So with all that being said, um, I'm basically just here today to get your input and see what you think about this. Um, I think it would make our town a lot more, or our courthouse area, inviting. Um, I noticed on Facebook, and I, I really got a good feel for this here lately, a lot of people are saying, oh, right now. Love our small town. And I love so much for me. Some people were saying I didn't like being from me, but I think people are starting to turn and say, I'm from Meade County, I'm from a town of me, and I like the Meade County. So this is something I would like to say just um, see how you all think of it and get your input. Um, I don't know if there any money that could help us with this. I don't know if the CARES money would do this because it's not really bringing a particular business back, although it's helping to bring business to those businesses back. Can't be much better. Um, but I do realize, because I can look at there, I could probably go to several large businesses. I think I could get some donations that could really help. Um, of course, we may have to look at, um, you know, where these small signs are at. Might not be the exact location that we can put another welcome sign up. Because I know the one there near Jefferson Street, the bank is really narrow. If you get down to the one at uh, across from Farm Bureau, um, when I was a kid, and you all may remember, there was a billboard there. Does anybody remember a billboard standing there? It was, and it, it was opened up much more, but it's taken away. One other thing I want to stress, too, and I noticed this morning when I was coming in on 360, back when they built the bypass, some really huge signs out there set a million. I think what they did, they knew there were bypass. <laughs> And they still wanted businesses to know that there was a town. But what happened for 30 years, everything went around us. But over the year, I also noticed the signs got smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, any questions? <coughs> How do you all feel about that? I guess it's something I would just like feedback if you have anything to share. Well, I think it would definitely be a positive if we've got bigger and more welcoming signs mm -hmm. to our little village. Uh, I, I don't think it could be a detriment in any way. Well, I've been to towns or courthouse or villages that have these signs, and they're a lot smaller than we are. So, you know, by us just having a little tiny sign, and especially what really bothers me is the direction sign with it. You know, it, it looks like they could have just given me a sign by itself. So. That is, that is about everything. Any questions I am. Well, <clears throat> like it's just a sign, you know, something like that really looks nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a coordinated effort between, you know, y'all and us and maybe like a garden club, you know, look nice if it had some flowers and somebody to keep it up. Uh, the thing about it, you got to, have a coordinated effort to help keep it looking nice or it does more damage than it does good. You're telling me because the civic sign, the fair story, there was a couple that would help me. Probably the last six years I've done it by myself. Mm -hmm. And last year my finger almost chopped off, so I couldn't do it. It looked really bad and I hated it. And I said, I gotta get there something. So it's not. But anyway, I don't know, can Joseph hear us? I can hear the whole. Yeah, I can hear the whole thing. I was just listening for the EDA responses first. Okay. I appreciate Eugene coming. Think uh, I had mentioned this in our last meeting, and thank you for following up on that, Eugene. I think it's thank a great you. idea. And, and I agree with uh, Mr. Wellen's points about maintenance. I also think we need to look at maybe whether the uh, the county maintenance can uh, be involved in some of these as well. I mean, it's for the benefit of the overall county. Yes, sounds good. The, the signs that we have, welcome to Amelia, they're maintained by the, the, the county? county? The county goes to grass. Okay. Yeah. But I like your idea of the garden club, too. I mean, you know, and, and when you look at the civic sign, you see how many different uh, Lions Club, and and I would I try to reach out to them to see if they could help, because that's a sign for the community there, too. That may have to... 
is it separate somewhere else? Well, like I said, I, I'm surprised if that property ever develops, it's going to have to be moved out. It's just one of those, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Right across from bb and the side of me overhead door. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a Masonic Lodge meet tonight. I'm going to bring it up about what we're talking about. Maybe something we can do to help yes. do our part because we are on that sign. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Well, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. If you don't mind, I'd love to set in on your meeting. And, uh, yeah, it's no problem. Look forward to uh, coming to your meetings. Uh, I really look forward to the chamber working closely with the county and the ADA. Um, you know, the chamber is a good way to promote the business once it's open with ribbon cuttings and brand open. It's good for the business and the community. So. Eugene, how is the membership there uh, on the chamber? Well, the first year was really strong. We started out big and it slowed down. Of course, this year with the pandemic, everything has been hurting. We weren't able to have several events that we had, were planning on having. And events sometimes draws more people in to the okay. chamber. Uh, we do have three board member positions that are open. So if you know of anyone that would like to serve on the Chamber of Commerce, uh, I, I didn't bring an application today, but I'd gladly get your application. And uh, you know someone to, that would like to sit on that board too. So. This is Amelia County Chamber of Commerce, not yes. the town of Amelia. No, it's the whole county. county. Yep. Yep. Uh, we have um, from all over. If someone can join the chamber and not even live in Amelia County, if they do business in Amelia County, they can still be a member. Not a joke chamber. So. Right. <laughs> But uh, we have not really gotten out there. Like I said, in the last year, it's just been, it's been hard for us to even get together and have our own meetings, everything going on. So. Mr. Poe, what, uh, what is the plan for this sign then? Is it something maybe that the chamber is going to pursue a little further to, to get a firm cost? I, we can, uh, but any input from you all, I was trying to check, believe it or not, I was finding California for that price, and I know there's got to be people here in Virginia that can do the same thing. Uh, I didn't even thought about going to Chester and saying, where'd you all get that sign? How did you get it? Well, you know Robert Hutchison. He does the wood, the wood car like across the street here. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a composite. That's just on oh, okay. salt wood, I believe. It. So, I, I'm just thinking maybe you know more. <laughs> Bruce does. Uh, you might, yeah, Robert might know some contacts that do other ones. Yes. And I think Sam Ar Sam Arrington could be a good contact too. I mean, they do a lot of signage related things. It's not this tight, but I have a feeling they might know some people, you know, in local businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, Marty, did you have anything you wanted to add? I know you're on the chamber. No, no I, I, I think you did a great job of explaining what we would like to have. I'm getting an echo. Okay, thank you, dear. Yes, anything else? So, is, I'm just trying to figure out who's going to carry the ball. Is, uh, is the chamber, at this point in time, going to, to look around a little bit to see if they can identify uh, maybe a manufacturer or somebody that can put something like this together and then bring it back, whether it's to the county or to the EDA for maybe a little uh, help with funding or something? Yes, I, I, we can certainly do that. Um, but what I'm, I'm going to, the rough edges is going to be the location to put the sign there. You know, sign up who actually owns that piece of property, if you're on the state or if you're on somebody's personal property uh, with the step back. So that's where the county <laughs> is. And then uh, we'd have to have utilities marked and things. I did like the idea of maybe like public works or something helping us and the, the clubs and organizations in the community. Uh, it'd be neat if we could have a light on the sign. You know, that's, uh, I, I'm impressed with some of the other groups that are looking at sprucing up the courthouse anyway. They want to put floodlights on the courthouse. Some are looking at some type of decorations for the lamp post and things for, to make it more festive throughout the year. Um, I just hate to see a business that comes into the courthouse square. And they're only there for a couple months and they're gone. And if we can do something to make people realize that, you know, they're fun, 
I used to live out west, and I can remember their whole old town, the town downtown, was talking about antique stores. Nothing but antique stores, but it drew people from all over that set up. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you think, well, what's going to come down? You're certainly not going to get a fast food there, but you've got a nice little Zacadian Ollie that's doing really well. I mean, she has taken off. Uh, Facebook is working really good for those it's advertising that way. But I still, you know, when you drive into the town, I even hope someday that we can look at doing something into Business 316. But this street right here looks nice. The lamp post looks beautiful. One of the prettiest streets in the um, courthouse area. But when you get out of Business 360, you're just driving through. You probably just keep on going because it doesn't look like anything that really stands out. So I know that's further down the road. So this could be something that could help enhance it somewhat. Okay. Yeah, so we will we'll check. I'll try to get more information on prices and all. And, uh, uh, you know, if you have anything, you can send me an email. Uh, let me see what I got a part. Um, can I keep these two signs right here temporarily? Because I'm a member of two of these bodies right here. Yeah. This is my email. It's from the chair, but you can send it back if I need to okay. tell me with anything. Excuse me. Yeah, <laughs> Anyone else? And I'll get these back to Taylor. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I appreciate you letting me talk today. And uh, like I said, I look forward to uh, attending the meetings. And if you don't mind, I'll just sit here and let uh, y'all carry you. on. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item up is selection of bond council. This goes back to, uh, I guess, last month when we had Robert Lauterberg come in from uh, uh, BML Baco Finance. Um, he's, uh, uh, they do some interim actually not interim they do some long-term financing or or help uh, bodies such as ours place it and though we don't have anything uh an immediate need obviously we're planning for the future and what we might uh run up against so he told everybody that um due to i guess it's scc regulations they need some type of a formal agreement with the body so they can uh represent them uh, I've emailed him uh, to send us a, uh, a template that uh, we could go over to and then send it to Jeff Gore to make sure everything looked right. And I have not gotten that. He he did say he'd be delighted to send it and he will be back in touch. But as of right now, I've not gotten anything from him. Um, we do have had a relationship in the past with Davenport and company. They actually uh, last helped us with uh, two groups that came through here. One of them was uh, Aqueous Solution. I don't know if you all can remember that one. Uh, they were involved with that. Nothing came of it, and we don't have a long-term agreement with them, so we're free to do whatever it is that we want to. So as soon as I get something back from Mr. Lauterberg, I'll bring it to the board. Any questions about that? Okay. Uh, the next uh, item I've got here. Yes, yeah, sir. I apologize, Taylor. So rather than waiting, like, so that presentation was actually two months ago. Rather than waiting for him to bring something back and then we have to have another meeting, can the board, can the EDA authorize you to sign within certain parameters? It feels like we just, it takes so long to get done if you have to go from meeting to meeting or authorize Mr. Wooten to, to sign you know, between meetings, something like that. I, th I think that would be perfect. I think if we had a motion that uh, authorized the chairman to sign uh, something that was approved by the county's attorney as regards to this issue, I think that would be fine. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded that I be authorized to sign. Uh, how we turn a bond agreement once off? Whatever. Once the uh, required attorney <laughs> <laughs> required paperwork. Okay. All those in favor by the sound of aye. Aye. Then we'll pose the same sound. Okay. Motion is carried. All right. The next item is a uh, discussion of the economic developer position. Uh, it seems like we've been uh, 
in this for 90 or 120 days didn't really gain a whole lot of traction the way we first went through it. I think the Board of Supervisors is going to discuss it at the workshop uh, tonight. And if anybody here has got any uh, input or feeling or comment about the way the process was handled or any suggestions as to uh, helping us move forward with this, I'm sure uh, both the board and uh, the public would benefit. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, do you have anything maybe to add as to, uh, <coughs> to what we went through real briefly? Not really. Well, I will. Uh, we started off with local advertisements at the same time we went to Indeeds. We ended up with 120 or so applications for it. We vetted through and came up with seven or eight people that were fairly decent candidates. Uh, did some telephone interviewing with six or seven of them, narrowed that down to two or three. We did some, actually chose two different people and made offers to one and they turned us down. The other one didn't get a chance to get an offer. They said they saw our needs and our, our desires, but it wasn't the right fit for them. We again interviewed the person we did next time out, uh, did show the qualifications that uh, part of the panel was looking for, the majority of the panel. And since then, we've been pretty much idle. Uh, we did have one person from Powhatan that the uh, committee didn't seem to care for that's still on the hook, but I don't think that's a good prospect to chase that. <coughs> But that's where we are. We did not fill the bill on that. Well, my personal opinion is I think we've taken our time, which we should have taken our time. We don't want to pick the wrong person by any means. And I don't see where we need to be in a on fire hurry. We need to take our time, and make sure that we select the right person when, when we do make the selection. Because to hire the wrong persons, uh, it, they're backing up, the, backing out the door. The, uh, the my people opinion. that we did talk to that we were making offers to on their out brief or debrief, they both said the same thing. And we were shooting for a level of expertise that we don't need. But the next candidate that came through didn't get it didn't really show the expertise that was needed and they were starting off in the field but there's a difference between starting off in the field when you're 22 or 25 years old and starting off in the field when you're 45 years old that makes a difference for where you're going to end up uh, the experience level there needs to be some whether it be education experience real experience or a good combination of both and i think that we had a candidate that was there but they were no longer interested when we went back to them and i think those people are out there it's not really a price point you can take a hit on whatever the price point it is that you're offering <coughs> but i think you need somebody with the right education with some experience, a little bit of experience and just getting the education is not where you want to be. I don't. I, I, I think you'll be chasing that rabbit for a while. Even the low hanging fruit will be hard for them. We'll get there, whatever direction y'all decide and the board decides to go. You can get there. I right. concur. I concur. Waiting, waiting for the right person with a combination of, of education and experience. Oh, I think it's worth waiting for myself. Yeah. If we continue like we've got a, a, a fire creeping up on us, then we might wind up with the wrong individual. And what have we accomplished there? I mean, that's my personal opinion, and I'm open for discussion or suggestions. I have a question. Uh, what would this person do on a daily basis? I'm not sure exactly what this role is. 
And, and that's another problem that we have. But I think somebody with the, the right education and a little bit of experience will know that. They will be on the phone. They'll be out <coughs> scouring the network of economic developers to find these businesses. It's a magical formula that you only get from a graduate degree. <laughs> I agree, Mr. Whitaker. It's the difference of reactive versus proactive. If you think about what this EDA has done this year, it's essentially reactive. Businesses come to you. Um, there's very little that's actually initiated and directed by the EDA. The point of a full-time economic developer is that they are proactive. They're going out, they're looking at opportunities within and outside the county to either grow inside the county or bring in from outside. <laughs> um, they can then be your arms and legs too. So you're all full-time, you know, people with lives outside of the EDA, and this is a very part-time position. This gives them the opportunity to go and do things. Um, for example, with Mr. Poe's presentation, it wouldn't have been any question of where, how to follow up if you had a ED, uh, an economic director you would have assigned that economic director to work with Mr. Poe <coughs> to get all the logistics handled, to figure out everything. So this is a part-time position? No, no it's full time. Be a full time. Full time. Thank <coughs> Every one of this group is, is part-time on development. This is the full time. And, and a key asset, that the person that's finally selected is that they meet, get along well with people, and bottom line, that they can sell. It's if you're not good at selling your product, you don't need to be in this position. I don't care if you've got three PhDs. You know, you've got to be able to meet well with with the public and uh, and sell, sell your sell, product. Sell and follow through. Absolutely. Without the follow through, you know. You, you've got a business that's sitting there struggling. You don't want that. That economic development is, is as much an influence for the existing businesses as it is for bringing new businesses. Well, we've added another leg to the stool, uh, Holly and the steel. Uh, and what David does, what the county administrator, now if we work closer with the chamber, we're all business people. Uh, we, the contacts come through, you know, if we get the right person, that's going to be great. But it's, um, it's being in the neighborhood uh, of Chesterfield County and everything goes on down there a little bit. A few crumbs fall off the table and we get them and we we're subject to get more as time goes on. So as we make our presentation, our interests and and with the industrial park expanding, uh, we're gonna have more opportunities. Any more discussion on economic developer? in our pursuit of an economic developer. Yes, okay. Next topic, Mr. So Taylor. is it back into the hands of the Board of Supervisors now? They're gonna talk about it tonight, I think. Uh, or I think they'll possibly touch on it, so yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. All right, Green Rock. Green Rock, Mr. Tatum probably knows more than we do. But Michael Lamb sold his business. I still don't know who purchased it. But what we're hearing where we are is that they have to finish the construction. They've got very little left to do over there. But it's got to be operational by the end of the year. It's a huge company to bought them. Uh-huh. 
they got, I heard around 150 concrete plants. Oh. Okay. Can everybody hear Dennis? He's a little low. Can say that again, please. It's, it's a big company that bought them out. I heard they got like 150 concrete plants. Cheney Concrete, I believe the name of them. I can hear you. Good. So there, uh, Green Rock, even though we haven't noticed a lot of movement on the ground. Uh, in fact, Richard Jones told me this morning that one of the components for the plant that they bought, when it came in, it was damaged. And that's been a holdup that nobody much had heard about. They had to send it back to to get something else. I don't know, Dennis, if you've heard that or not. I haven't heard it, but I heard they were a progressive company. Yeah. Uh -huh. and it, and it, but it's firm. They have to be up and operational, ready to run by the end of the year in order for the sale to close. Okay. okay. Any questions about Green Rock? Okay. Update on the broadband on GBC and the Amelia Water Tower. Uh, there's a little bit of equipment left to be installed on the water tower. Uh, they were over there Friday. I don't think they finished it the main water tower. Um, but the, the hold up right now is Dominion Power. Dominion Power and Mid-Atlantic Broadband have to trench in electrical as well as the broadband, the fiber from the side of the road over to the GBC tank. Uh, the last I heard that was scheduled to be done at the end of this week. I think the Featherstone farm uh, uh, antennas and all the equipment down there has been installed and it's pretty well operational. So as soon as they can get some power and the fiber to uh, GBC there, there's nothing standing in their way. And so, so the, the EDA's part, the EDA's tower, all of that has been done. Just waiting to get the electric and the fiber to it. The co the, the name of that company uh, is River Street. River Street. River Street. And so the other broadband uh, straight up net, they're still doing some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this River Street uh, sounds like they're really making some progress with their antennas or whatever. Yeah. It's it's not as fast as everybody would like, but uh, they they are moving along. They're making progress. <coughs> uh, hopefully, when as soon as we get the power to GBC and the fiber, we'll start to see some service delivered. They, they don't make any money until they start uh, servicing accounts. So it's it's important for them to do that as well. So they don't have any uh, body as a customer locally right now? Not to my knowledge. Okay. And you don't know anything about the internet speed or um, when it'll be up and going? Are they making sales now? Or They're, They've got a standard that they have to meet. What, what's the definition of broadband? 25.3? 25 3. That's okay. what they've got to deliver. Okay. So that's their deal. I think you know, they've got to cover 95% of the county uh, by the time they're done. That's a that's a huge undertaking. They can't just go to where they think they can make money. They have to provide it uh, all around. The other big thing uh, that uh, is uh, important to remember is these folks have a cap on their service on the price that they're going to charge. The standard package is less than $50. That's in the I 46 or something like that. Okay. If you have, uh, uh, if you live below a certain level approaching poverty, I think one of the standards is if you have children that are eligible for free lunch, you get $10 off of that. So our very neediest of folks would be in the 30s per month for, uh, Broadband, um, that's uh, that's something that's uh, worth noting. Well, I think that's a big deal. I mean, uh, you know, that they're making some progress and the price seems right and everybody's working from home now and the kids are 
working from home now. I've got um, straight up net at my house, and it's been it's been good. It's fast, but I'm one of the I guess fewer ones that have a a, a good signal from the tower. Mm-hmm. And mine's like a hundred bucks, hundred and nine. But I got the fast one. Mm-hmm. But it's doing pretty good. So it's nice to to, to hear the progress with uh, River Street. It's nice to know the technology works too. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the same technology. Okay. It works. We don't have very many problems. Uh, uh, uh-huh. I think they've had some issues lately, not with mine, but some of the other packages that they've had. I, I, I don't know enough about it to elaborate, but I knew somebody that had a smaller package or came in on later and they were limiting the amount of uh, service they had. But I guess mine was early enough and we're paying for the premium. And, Mm-hmm. It's working pretty good. Yeah, well, they've shipped materials in that we unloaded them at the barnyard. They've got a couple of spools of uh, cable that they're going to use. They've got a couple of pallets of ground rods and different types of equipment and things. So uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from satisfied customers before too long. And then the Board of Supervisors, on a different note, they approved the communications tower down in Manboro at the last meeting. And we're, that thing is tied up again in another historical study. I think they've got to put a balloon up in the air and some historians are going to go around and make sure it doesn't interfere with the view shed of some paths that some soldiers used 150 years ago. But once that's out of the way, they've, uh, they've already ordered, I believe, or this week they're going to order the actual Hour okay. to have it delivered by the end of the or by the first of uh, January. What about the Painville, Deatonville area? That's we got to get the other areas going first. <clears throat> okay, if it's it's just going to have to build out. Is what it is. Once you get your stuff here in the village, which is going to be their main control point, they start branching from there. Okay. Just happens that the Manboro Tower. That deal went through on a decent location, and it was an alternate alternative location from where they originally wanted. That held up quite a bit of time, six to eight weeks on that. Going from one location and starting over. So. Okay. And that will probably happen once. Well, I got some properties in Painville and Deatonville area, and if, it, if we can put a tower on it, I'd be glad to talk with them. And we'll be well, Robert, one of the problem one of the problems is they've had very low response from the county, and they base their decision based on the responses. And the last map we looked at, it was shocking how few people had responded from up in the area you're talking about. So, like like Taylor said, they're in the business to make money. <coughs> they're going to put the towers where they have the most interest. And people are not filling out the form. And the form doesn't commit anybody to anything. It just says, I want better internet. Uh, so we have been talking to River Street about better advertising of that. Um, but to the degree all of you on the EDA can help push people to, uh, to do that, it would be great. What, what, Mr. what Mr. Easter is saying is exactly right. There's a, a website that you can find if you go to the counties you can go to your home it will check your speed and it will tell you whether you're eligible or not and whether you're eligible or not if you tell them that you want the river street service or a better service to come that logs in their system as demand and the more demand you find someplace the better you're going to be so we're going to get there Any other questions about broadband? Okay. The discussion questions. All right. The the last few things we've got to talk about are uh, items subject for a closed meeting. Uh, Talking about the uh, either the acquisition or disposal of real estate, which is. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all so much. All right. Thank, thank you, Mr. Poe.
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You all have a good day. And we'll see you Thursday. <clears throat> correct? I'm going to do what I can. Yeah. Miss, I'll let you know. That's right. a couple days away, though. Yeah, Mr. Poe and Ms. Scott here are going to participate in a um, virtual meeting with the VGA. It's about a grant application that uh, apparently a local firm has uh, submitted to a program that the VGA must uh, handle. And the chamber has got to have some input on it. So we're going to take care of that Thursday. And we appreciate you being there. If you both have a link, you. Taylor, send me the link and I could take my laptop in and probably do that. I certainly if will. I need to get back here. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> Okay, I think we need to go into a closed session pursuant to Virginia Code 2.2-3711.3. And uh, I need a motion that we're going to closed session, I think. I make a motion we're going to close session to discuss this business. Do I hear a second? A second. Second. Those in favor? Let it be known by the sound of aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, same sound. We are in close. Okay, now okay. you're good to go. Ma Maudie certified. Certified. It's certified. I certify. Certified. I certify. I certify. I don't know. I certify. <laughs> I certify. <laughs> I was wanting everybody, David. <laughs> okay, we're out of closed session. Thank you, David. And Mr. Chairman, that's all I've got on my list. Okay, I uh, and it's Robert. So after you brought up, I, I think we need to go ahead and uh, set some wheels in motion on the uh, try to get some estimates on the cost factor of uh, okay improving this road. All right, I think that's all public, certainly. So is a uh, the intention of the body is to, I guess, get with our engineer and start the process for planning uh, to put a road into those that back portion. Yeah, I, I would think so. If we get a nod for that, we don't really need a motion. Cup. We're just right. going forward with the plan at this point. Okay. So yeah, you've got the nod of the. Yeah, it works for me. Uh -huh. All right, I can do that. <clears throat> this comes under this infrastructure to help make the rest of it go. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Uh, do we have any other points of discussion or questions? If not, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yes. in an email to you, Mr. Harvey, I had asked whether the EDA does any sort of annual reporting about its progress and success. And <coughs> Harvey said he wasn't aware of any report like that. Um, I think it would be a really good idea if when you close out 2020, maybe in January, if you could create a report uh, like that to show progress. And I'll just make the suggestion informally, but if you if you'd prefer the board to make the request, we can. But um, I think I've talked to several board members. There's mute, there's pretty significant interest in that. I don't really see any reason why we can't put together a progress report at the end of the year. Oh. And I think part of that would be everybody cool, like address, addressing the you know progress towards the the plans that are already in place, the formal plans. Good way to measure it. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, we can discuss that a little bit more in future how we come about putting together. I think. Yeah. I think it'll be done. Not a bad idea. Not a bad Not idea. Good idea. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. Well, without any other discussion, I will. Only call other, this meeting adjourned. Go ahead. The only other question I had was how is the, uh, you know, we had the CARES money that was going to be distributed to the 
business, and I thought that this board was going to get involved in some of it, but I, I see that we've not. Is there any money left or what's being? Holly, Holly, it's a great question. Holly is better prepared to answer that, I think, okay. than anybody. Yeah, and Joseph might know more specific numbers. I don't know the specific numbers, but we have given out a great deal of it. Not all of it. Um, we are cutting off the small business funding on the 20th of this month, uh, but we've given out hundreds of thousands of dollars to small businesses. Um, but there is still money left. Okay. Joseph, do you know the exact number that we've given out right off? I'm sorry, it's in the uh, public board report every uh, month. I don't have the current one in front of me, but Holly's right, it's multiple hundred okay. thousand. Yeah. Keep the conversation going. Let me go ask Carl if she knows it and we can get it on the record. Oh, she, yeah, she has a printout for as of today. So the interest, the interest was pretty great? Yes. At first, it was slow trickling in, but there were a couple of weeks there where we were getting 10 to 15 applications a day. Um, and the same for the grants to individuals. That really blew up as well. Huh. And we've given out a significant amount of those, too. So it has been, there's been a large interest in that, which has been really good. What does yeah. it take to qualify? For which one? For uh, either one that you said yeah. that the businesses can. Uh... Yeah, so for the businesses, um, basically you just have to be in a business in Amelia that's been in operation for at least two years. And you just have to show that you've had a decrease in income as a result of the COVID. Um, so basically people have been giving us their taxes from 2019 compared to their profit and loss for 2020. And we've been comparing those to see how much of a loss they had. And then individuals, were, um, they can submit an unemployment letter or anything showing that they were in, their work was impacted. Okay. The so the individuals have to prove that they uh, lost income or lost their job because of COVID and the businesses have to show uh, same type yep. of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. They've got to prove it somehow. I mean, I assumed that was the case, but try not to assume. Yeah. Uh, okay. As of, uh, as of today, we have written checks for $327,440. This is to business and individual grants. Carla said she didn't have the individuals uh, segregated, but the vast majority of this, this is for business. And we've got an additional $25,340 that has been approved and the checks are to be written. So that's over $350,000 that has made its way to uh, local business as well as individuals. Good. Thank you. The, the, another number here is $68,645. That's the remaining balance as of, as of 11 nine, but uh, Holly stated that this is getting cut off on 1120. So okay. there is additional funding there if something came in at the last minute. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Okay, I'm going to declare this EDA meeting adjourned. I'm going to have a motion. He can declare. Motion. Oh, he can do that? Oh, yeah. I still know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, I got to move. Second. 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 All in favor. All right. Have a good afternoon. Take care. Thank you too. You. Brenda, you still send out the email to the group about this? I haven't been getting. Oh, hold on.